All right, welcome to our video about how to prepare for AP test day. Uh, this is the assignment for Monday, October 12th, but I will go ahead and leave it up because I think there's going to be some hints and tips potentially that you want to come back to and remind yourself of later on as you're getting ready for the test itself. So I'm obviously uh, Chris Gall and I'll be your host for the, uh, for the class today. And so quick notes, um, the first slide is going to have a video, so we're going to watch that from the College Board. And then we'll just go ahead and talk through um, the AP test itself and hopefully some answer and address some of your questions and things like that. So we'll talk question types and what to expect on test day and um, also a little bit about just how to prepare for the exam, some tips and tricks and things like that that you can go ahead and make use of. All right, so here's this uh, video from the College Board, and it is about two minutes long, and then we'll go ahead and pick up from there. Welcome to the 2021 Digital AP Exams. This year, AP students testing digitally will use our new digital testing application to complete their full-length exams. The app works on desktops and laptops, PC or Mac, and on school-managed Chromebooks. Before exam day, you'll download the app to your device. Then, three days before your AP exam, you'll complete a quick exam setup where you confirm some info about yourself and your device. You must complete exam setup for each digital AP exam you take. On exam day, you need to check in 30 minutes before your exam starts. You'll review some privacy policies, type a security statement, and get ready to test. Most AP exams are a combination of multiple choice and free response questions. To keep digital testing secure, you won't be able to move back and forth between questions or review questions you've already answered. On the free response questions, you'll type directly into the app and your work will be saved to your device automatically. There are no files to upload and you won't submit any handwritten work. An internet connection is required to test, but the app will keep running even if your connection drops momentarily. When the exam is over, your answers will be submitted automatically. If your device is offline, you'll have time to reconnect and submit your work. We're excited to share our new digital testing app with you. Good luck on your AP exam. All right, so that was our brief video about the AP exam. Uh, and like I, said, I wanted to go ahead and embed that because uh, it does contain some information that I wanted to make sure that you were aware of, uh, mostly around the fact that we will be testing digitally. Um, you will be testing at home. Okay. Uh, and so there's some some things to consider with that. So let's go through. We'll talk a little bit about the day of the test itself um, and also uh, hopefully answer some of your what if questions. Okay. So first things first, your test is going to be Thursday, May 20th, 2021, and it's going to start at 1 p.m. Okay. Uh, that is local time. It's going to start at 1 p.m. local time. Right. You need to be online around noon to do a systems check and get logged in and set up. I know that the video said 30 minutes before, but you always want to allow time for equipment failure or for their website to be lagging or things like that. Okay, So better to log in early and get that stuff out of the way and just have a few minutes where you're sitting around then to log in perfectly on time and end up having to start a little bit late because everybody else is logging in at that same time. So log in around noon to do, your, do a systems check, get yourself logged in, type up the statement that you need to type up and all of that. Okay, as they said, you're gonna be downloading an app and you're gonna need to do that at least a few days ahead of time. I will post the information about how to do that up in Canvas. And undoubtedly, you noticed that there is a new homepage in Canvas that I've designed that's specific for our test review window. And I'll add information to that as we go. Okay. On the day of testing, you are excused from classes during testing, okay. uh, which means in particular in that afternoon, you do not need to attend classes because obviously you'll be testing, so you can't be two places at once. Uh, 
Testing, again, will be completed remotely from home, which means that if you are sharing equipment and thus need additional equipment, or if your Wi-Fi is not reliable, okay, so maybe it just will randomly go out and be out for 45 minutes or two hours or things like that, uh, you need to contact Ms. Friedman ASAP to make sure that you've got the equipment you need and if you need to set up to do it somewhere on campus that we can make that accommodation and find the space for you. Okay, That's when you're looking her up to email her, that's Ms. Rebecca Friedman. <clears throat> okay. Oops, sorry, let me go back there. Um, some other testing expectations. It is a closed note exam. Okay. And yes, that includes both the internet and paper notes or flashcards. One of the things that that um, app is going to do is it's going to lock out your ability to access other resources on the same device. Okay. The time is tight, which means that when they say you're done, you're done. The app will submit your work promptly if it's online. Okay. Um, if it's not online, it is designed to prevent you from continuing to work and then they'll give you a set time frame within which you have to get your device back online so it can upload the work okay uh, you are not 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 to discuss test questions at any time for any reason unless they are publicly released okay which basically for the multiple choice means never uh, they only release a few of those exams um, and then maybe for the FRQs about a week or so after the exam, but you'd want to double check and make sure. Okay. Um, so this for sure absolutely includes social media and yes, they monitor for it every year, every year. Kids get their um, scores canceled because they went online and posted the topics of questions. Okay, so just don't do it. Don't be that dumb. If you are caught cheating and or disclosing information publicly, they can cancel your test, meaning it doesn't get scored and you don't get a grade for it. Okay, and in particular with cheating, they might very well put a note on your college board transcript or notify colleges that you have been caught cheating and colleges take cheating accusations extremely seriously as in you won't get in if you have one so please 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 do not cheat do not disclose test questions save yourself the trouble i wish i was kidding about this stuff but sadly i'm not every year kids get caught every year it's it's a bit of a joke with the teachers okay um, so just don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay. Um, some differences from last year for those of you guys who took AP exams last year, right? Yes, there are both types of questions this year for every AP exam. Multiple choice and free response questions for ones that have questions like that, right? Um, it will cover all of the units. They will cover all of the units in about the amounts that I'll indicate on the next slide or two slides away, I forget exactly when, but I'll tell you how much and I'll make that information very available to you. Okay. Um, you cannot, as you are working on the multiple choice, go back and check your answers. So that means you have to practice slowing yourself down and getting things right the first time using your strategies. So you've got to work on that. You've got time, but you got to work on it. You got to have a strategy because you can't go back and check or change something. Okay. Um, you are going to need to type your free response question answers, which is great for those of you who have poor handwriting and type quickly. Um, but if you don't type quickly, maybe consider working on trying to pick up your typing speed so that you can make sure that you answer the question. Um, if you need to, and some of you, most of you probably type just fine, especially after so much typing in the last year, pardon me, year or two, okay, you probably type just fine. But if you don't, 
just know that you might want to go through and pick up your typing speed. Okay. Um, so info about the test itself, in particular about question types, right? There are going to be 100 multiple choice questions to be completed in 70 minutes. That means you're going to have about 42 seconds of question, I think, if I calculated that correctly. All right. That sounds like not enough time. It is enough time. It is enough time. Slow yourself down. Practice slowing yourself down so that you take almost the entire 70 minutes so that you're reading stuff through carefully and evaluating your answer choices. Okay. Most kids go too fast. So if you're consistently been finishing stuff up quickly and not scoring well, that's probably why. Okay. For a handful of you, it'll be the opposite direction where you move too slow. Um, but for the vast majority of you, you probably move too quickly. Multiple choice is going to count for two thirds of your overall score. That's why you want to do it correctly. Right? Um, and it's going to be split between the nine units that we covered in roughly these percentages. And they give you ranges because they change it slightly from year to year, the specific amount. Right? So unit one, that's that scientific foundations of psychology, 10 to 14%. That's the third biggest amount, fourth biggest amount, I guess, right? Unit two, biological foundations of behavior, that's the brain, right? Eight to 10%. Unit three, sensation perception, six to 8%. Unit four, learning, seven to 9%. Unit five, cognitive psych, 13 to 17%, right? That's the biggest one is cognitive psych, right? Uh, unit six, developmental, seven to 9%. Unit seven, motivation, emotion. Oops, that should be motivation, emotion, and personality. Sorry, 11 to 15%. Unit eight, clinical psych, 12 to 16%. Uh, that's the, the second biggest one. And motivation, emotion, personality is the third biggest one. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on those ones for sure. All right. And then unit nine, social psych, eight to 10% of the questions. As we've with the ones that we've done during class. There's five possible answer choices and you choose the best answer choice, not just one that works. And this is what catches a lot of kids with multiple choice on these exams, right? They'll get an answer that's close to right, but it's not the best answer. You want the best answer, right? I have a whole other video about multiple choice strategies that you can watch if you need some help, okay? Um, free response questions. You're going to have two questions and they're going to give you a total of 50 minutes. One of those questions is going to be concept application. And this is, and this is from the College Board, going to assess your ability to explain behavior and apply theories and perspectives in authentic contexts. In other words, they're going to give you a scenario and ask you to use various theories or concepts to explain what's going on. Okay, or if you approach it from a specific perspective to explain what's going on. So that's application. You got to not just know what's going on, but understand it if you're going to apply it. All right, the second one is research design. And that's going to assess your ability to analyze psychological research studies, right, including analyzing and interpreting quantitative data. That is really going to be a combination of unit one with some other units in there for application, but for sure it's going to cover that research design piece. Okay, um, you have 50 minutes to do both and they'll have a timer. When you do this in person, the, the proctor will actually prompt you to consider moving on after 25 minutes. Um, the remote system should be similar where they're going to encourage you to move on after 25 minutes, but you're not required to do so. And the trick is simply that if you spend 28 minutes on question one, that you have 22 minutes for question two. That's the only trade-off, okay? Um, the verbs that they'll use include, and this is a reasonably definitive list, right? They're either gonna ask you to construct, or since you're taking it online, you won't have to draw probably, but to for sure to construct, right? Um, to define, to describe, you might be asked to draw a conclusion to explain or to identify or state something, okay? So 
free response questions are all about application. In other words, not only do you know the vocabulary, but you understand how the vocabulary works out in real life. What does it mean to look at a given situation and use these different ideas? Okay, so you got to have an in-depth understanding to be able to do that properly. And I am going to post up tons of practice free response questions as well. And this is the other one third of your exam is those two questions. Okay, so two thirds multiple choice, one third free response. Uh, some resources that are going to be available to help you prepare. Of course, there's AP Classroom, right? Video lectures by topic. If I haven't gone through and assigned the ones from first quarter, I will do that, but I think I already did that. Um, I posted up three practice exams at the beginning of spring break on the Monday. I would strongly recommend that you sit down and take them, at least one, to practice with things like timing, to practice with things like um like real conditions right uh, there's also unit and topic based practice multiple choice questions and then unit based free response questions as well okay so that there are lots of materials up there designed to help you out and i did make those available to you okay um oh yeah the practice exams are going to use a lockdown browser it's going to require you to download one just so that you know um, up in Canvas, I am going to have pages and information for each unit. And I was just working on this. So I'll have a front page that's basically an index page. And then I'll have pages for each unit along with general and test specific information. And that'll include how to get a hold of me, how to get a hold of Mrs. Friedman, um, a copy of this video, and things like that. Okay. I will also make sure that there's released free response questions, scoring rubrics, and sample and um, sorry, sample responses. I would strongly recommend you take some time and go through and practice with the scoring piece and make sure you understand why kids got the scores they got. It'll help you as you're learning to construct your responses. Okay. Um, there'll be links to video lists for each unit. Some of them will be lectures, some of them will be more like pop culture-ish ones where it's, um, you know, some of them will be crash course, but some of them will also be like vice or things like that, where they're going through and talking about specific concepts. Um, I will make sure that there is some content review packets up there. I will post fresh copies of the chapter packets for those of you who want to go back through and, and do those because maybe you didn't the first time or maybe you can't find them. Right. And then I'll also have some other content that's just to be determined as I'm going through and, and going through my resources and things like that, things that I think might help. What I will try and do is keep it organized and keep it clean so that you can find what you need relatively simply, but that there's also a variety of resources based on what people are actually asking for, what they want. Um, resources to help you prepare. AP test prep books. Okay, You are going to need to buy and or borrow these. Just so you know, that's not something that the school provides. I recommend the Barron's book. Um, it's got lots and lots of practice questions, which I like, but it also does a nice job with the content review. I know the author, he's a great guy. He's one of those guys who has been known to write test questions for the college board, been on the test committee, things like that. Uh, but really any of them will do, okay? Um, you just wanna make sure that as you're going, you've got content review, because they'll be about half or a third the size of your textbook. Right? It's got practice, practice questions and practice exams, um, and they give explanations for answers, which is really helpful when you're working with uh, multiple choice and things like that, along with testing information, because it's just nice to have that information from more than one source. Okay. Um, these could be bought for as little as 10 to $20 used or new. If you're going to go the used route, I would say just get something within the last couple of years, right? So maybe no more than about 2018 or so or newer. Um, King County Library has at least a few, I've seen them. Um, we've offered the class at Beamer for about five years, so you probably can ask around and you may be able to find someone who has one that they're willing to loan you or give to you. Okay, so lots and lots of options. Um, you do wanna be careful if you're ordering online because there are a couple of uh, test review books that only have questions, okay? Um, which if you want lots of multiple choice practice, I would recommend them. 
but they're not going to do any content review or practice exams or things like that. Right? I know of at least two that are just multiple choice question practice. Uh, and then also with online resources, just be aware that there's a wide variety of resources online. So caveat emptor, which really just means buyer beware. Okay. Um, some of these are significantly better than others. So, you know, Quizlet, there's plenty of good uh, review um, uh, stacks of flashcards that are probably pretty good. Uh, you know, um, there's some quiz games. Uh, I score five if you're looking for an app. Um, generally is really good. I, I know for AP Human Geo, it comes highly recommended. And I've heard the same thing for AP Psych, but I haven't looked at the AP Psych one yet. Uh, so just make sure that you're you're um, looking out to make for yourself and getting getting good resources. Okay. A um, few quick study tips. Right. Take the time to actually go back through the College Board course outline, which I'll post up in Canvas, or use the AP Classroom practice quizzes to help determine strengths and weaknesses. Right. You're you're still going to review the stuff you're strong in, but you're going to spend most of your time working on the weaknesses those areas that need a little more intensive effort. Okay. Be sure that as you're doing this, you're quizzing yourself and you're working with that timing piece. We haven't worked with the timing piece in class this year. Okay. Um, doing this does two things. One, it forces you to remember, which strengthens your memory. Okay. And the more you do it, the less stressed you'll feel about the timing piece. Okay. Uh, if you can, study in the same space you intend to test in and under testing conditions under similar kinds of conditions, right? Um, spaces and times of day have memories. So take advantage of that, right? Take advantage of that. That'll help calm your body down. So if you can, you know, if you're going to test in your bedroom, study in your bedroom. If you're going to, you know, you're going to test around one o'clock, whenever you can, try to study around one o'clock so that when it hits that time, when it, you're in that space, your brain just shift gears and it knows, okay? Um, also, make sure that you're practicing typing the FRQ responses, right? Um, and work on multiple choice questions one at a time without looking back so that you're in that mode and your brain is used to those strategies, right? So you're not stressing about it. And one other trick that's counterintuitive, don't over-prepare, okay? Um, it'll raise your stress levels if you over-prepare. So give yourself a set amount of time each day half an hour or so, um, or each week, maybe three to four hours over the course of a week, right? Um, to work on this stuff and stick the schedule. Stick the schedule. The time you put in will be enough. It will be enough, okay? As you're going through and doing your studying, practice strategies for each type of question. Each time you practice, use your strategies. You want those to be second nature by the time you're testing. Again, lowers your stress levels. If you have strategies, if your brain knows you have strategies, if your brain doesn't have to think about it, build that muscle memory. Okay. A um, few other quick notes. I will post up times where I will hold question where I will hold um, specific content or sorry, question type specific. That's what I'm really trying to say there. And potentially unit specific review sessions. So I will put those up in Canvas and I will send notes out about those. Okay. Um, and I will post up videos I have about multiple choice strategies and about FRQs as well. Um, I'll go ahead and put together a discussion board where you can post up suggestions and or questions for each other. And I would suggest that you put resources there as well. So if you come across a particularly good um, Quizlet deck for unit two, right, which every kid struggles with it because it's all about the brain and all about the nervous system. Put it up there. Help each other out. Okay, help each other out. Again, you should study at a minimum probably for about three to four weeks an hour or a week, but I wouldn't go too much beyond that. You want to study enough, but not too much. Okay, um, and as you're doing that, you should either review content or practice question types. If you're practicing different types of questions, that's also going to double as your content review. Either way, make sure that you're quizzing yourself, forcing yourself to recall. Okay. Um, reviewing content might be as simple as going back through your notes or rewriting your notes in a different format or things like that. Uh, could be watching videos about things you're not clear about and so forth. Okay. 
Preferably, you're gonna spend, spread that time out over several days to give your brain time to forget about things in between sessions. Again, this strengthens memory if you do it that way. Okay, so if you can, and I know that's not always possible, spread it out. Uh, contact me as you go with questions, either about testing or about content, whatever you need, and I'll do anything I can to help you out. So whether that's helping you sort out getting the computer you need or figuring out um, because your Wi-Fi is really unreliable, getting taking it somewhere on campus, or if you have a question about the central nervous system, whatever you need, let me know and I will do everything I can to help you out. All right, good luck studying and I will see you the next time I hold a Q&A session.